What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. It's not a daily video. I know the streak ended yesterday, but it is the first day of international break. So guys, please just allow me. I don't think I'm going to have the same issue throughout the international break. I do think I've got a steady brand of content to get you guys through the next two weeks. But... Because it is the international break, it does mean the return of one thing, and that is unpopular opinions. This is the show where you send in your unpopular Chelsea opinions, be it through Chelsea, or down in the comment section below if you guys got some un unpopular opinions that we can look at down on a future episode. But this is the episode where you send in your unpopular opinions, we look through them, and we discuss whether it's actually a pretty decent opinion or whether you're chatting out of your ass. Um, before we start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button and hit that subscribe subscribe button and also if you want to get the hat trick press that bell notification button as well we're actually getting very close to to 17k now it's been a massive drag but we're getting there a bit closer now so please if you haven't done so already smash that subscribe button and yeah let's go straight into your unpopular opinions Havertz sees the most time slash seasons I think to adapt out of all our signings and we'll have our best impact out of all of our attacking signings now, we were speaking about this on the Chelsea show yesterday as well. If you guys haven't checked that out, Chelsea show, Football Terrace down below. Big up all of them as well because it's an amazing group. Um, yeah, we were saying that Kai Havertz has the highest ceiling out of all our new signings. And I do agree with this point. I don't think this is too much of an unpopular opinion. Havertz, I think you can say he's been the slowest to adapt out of everyone that has joined the team. But same way, it doesn't mean that he's been the poorest. I think... Kai Havertz has just been looked down on because his final touch hasn't been a goal or assist enough for people. But I think every time he's been on the ball, he looks excellent. He looks uh, very slow and luggish sometimes, but that's just his body language. And people take that as him being lazy and not having too much impact. But if you see the way he plays, he's always winning aerial duels. He's always winning 50-50s. He's progressing the ball excellently. His defensive awareness is excellent as well. It's a massively underrated part of his game. It's just because he's not getting enough goals and assists people are saying that he's been playing poorly but he really hasn't he's just assimilating to premier league to the premier league style of playing if we're going to criticize him for anything I think he's at his worst when he's getting the ball out of our half and he's being pressed. That's probably why we play him a little bit further up forward, but that's why his preferred position is the number 10. But that's just nitpicking. I think out of all I think out of all of our signs, you can say he's been the slowest, but I still also think he's been an excellent signing for us so far. And just wait for him to start assimilating a bit more. Give this guy about two or three months, because if I remember correctly, most of his goals come in the back end of seasons anyway. So give this guy till the end of the season and then if you really want to judge him, judge him then. But even then, I'm saying, trust me, Kai Havertz is going to get better as the seasons progress. But in three seasons' time, he should be one of, if not the best player in the league. Just you watch. You can clip this and everything. We need to loan Callum out in January. And yes, I do agree with this one. I've been a bit iffy about loaning Callum Hudson-Odoi over the last 18 months. But I do think it is the best move for him. We kind, we kind of could have done this at the start of last season. But I mean, obviously, with all the injury issues and everything, it didn't make too much sense. But now he's fully fit and everything. He's still barely getting games for us. Now, I think at 20 years old now, especially with the way Hudson Doy struggled over the last two two seasons to really stamp a claim for a starting 11 spot at Chelsea, the loan deal is the best move for him. I know Bayern are circling in for him, and I don't want to see him go to Bayern Munich because he is a great talent, and I know it's going to be another De Bruyne or Salah or Lukaku story if we get rid of this guy. But same way, he needs regular game time, and he's not getting it here. And also, we can't even criticise Frank Lampard for not giving him that game time anymore. Because simply put, when he plays, he doesn't justify that game time. He doesn't look that confident on the ball. He's not taking on players the same way he used to. And he looks to have regressed a little bit. So, yeah, the more I think about it, the more I would go for a loan deal for him. Bring in another winger if you wanted to. I know we we're trying to look for a final winger as like the icing on the cake for a massive transfer window. But I would loan Callum Hudson the door out because I don't think he's getting the right amount of opportunities here. I don't even think he's getting the right amount of chances here, but that's also because he's not justifying it as well. So I do think he needs to go to a slightly lower quality club. Still a Premier League club, though. I would hold that. But I want to see him go to a slightly lower quality club where he can be one of the best players in the squad. He can get a feel of what it's like to have a team rely on him week in and week out. And maybe that responsibility will get the best out of him. But yeah, I do think Callum Hudson-Odoi needs to be loaned out. People say that Pulisic is on thin ice, but we built this team around him. That's why we didn't get a dribbling winger on the right wing, so we're not one-dimensional. 
I kind of get the point that you're trying to make, but to say we didn't get a dribbling player on the right wing when we have Hakim Ziyech starting games for us now, not really the best of point. Hakim Ziyech on the ball is ridiculous. His dribbling is ridiculous. His one-on-ones is ridiculous, man. And we haven't even seen him at his best yet. I, I get the type of point that you're trying to make. They're both different types of wingers. I think Hakim Ziyech is a bit more of a passer than uh, Christian Pulisic. Christian Pulisic is more take on players and then try and take a shot inside or outside of his foot. So I kind of get what you're trying to say, but no, I... I still, I think we get the same thing out of Hakim Ziyech too. If Pulisic is on thin ice for anything, it's probably because of his injury record. He's what, 22 years old with 20 injuries already, and I think most of them are muscular injuries. And it's definitely due to the way that he plays. He plays a very explosive style of play, and it takes a lot out on his legs. And look at the FA Cup final injury for one. For one, he completely exploded out and he just completely did his leg doing it. I, I can't fully describe what the injury was, but it's an explosive problem. And Frank Lampard and Chelsea have identified it as an issue with his style of play that keeps causing these constant injuries. So if Pulisic is on thin ice for anything, it's because Chelsea are trying to rechange up his style of play a little bit just so he can last a little bit longer because the guy's legs are made of glass right now and we do need to try and change that. So the only thing holding him back is his injury record. But the thing about dribbling player on the right wing, nah, I don't really agree with that too much. Unpopular opinion. Mason Mount will have 10 plus goals and assists this season. Um, optimistic, but I don't see any reason not to agree with you. Mason Mounts looked amazing in the number 8 position. I know in Burnley he had the most tackles and chances created in the game. I, he only has one goal and assist so far this season, but... 10 plus goals and assists, if that's combined, yeah, I've, I see no reason why he can reach that. 10 plus goals and 10 plus assists, that's a mad season for him if he does that. But same way, the way that we've been playing recently, I've got no reason not to feel optimistic. So yeah, I back that as well. Barkley is a false nine. Hashim, bro, what are you doing, man? I'll be real. I said the same thing on the Chelsea show. If I see Ross Barkley in a Chelsea shirt again, it will be too soon. I have not forgotten how consistently average this guy was for us for years and years just because he's playing well at Aston Villa. I already said he needs to go to a team of lower quality because that's basically his level. He suits Aston Villa. His form just means to me that we can get a decent amount for Ross Barkley when the, when the season ends in around May or June-ish. But I don't want to see Ross Barkley at Chelsea. His decision making was shockingly inconsistent for us. He always seemed like the sort of player that knew what he wanted to do in his head but he couldn't translate it to his feet. And even if you watched Aston Villa throughout the whole season, he hasn't been banging it out for them either. He's had a great game against Liverpool, a great game against Arsenal, but against the smaller teams he's disappeared as well. So it just sounds like the same old Ross Barkley to me. Ross Barkley, I'll give him credit, before we went into lockdown, he was having the best form of his Chelsea career. That's it. Since then and before then, he's just been complete, completely average, consistently mid, and I don't want him at Chelsea back. I just want to try and get 30, 40 million for him, max out the profit because we only got him for 50 million anyway, but please just get rid. No, get rid. Czech is a bigger legend than Drogba. Carry Chelsea in the 2012 Champions League and is statistically the best Premier League goalkeeper. He is statistically the best Premier League goalkeeper, but... A bigger legend than Drogba, that is a mad statement because if we're talking about big game players, Didier Drogba is the big game player and he created Chelsea moments for himself. I'm not going to sit here and compare which one's more of a Chelsea legend because they're both from the same, same type of era and I think they both had the same amount of impact just in different ways. Petr Cech just kept, the whole, kept us quiet defensively. Didier Drogba just turned up whenever he needed him to, so... I'm at, I don't know, I'm not going to pick who's a better legend out of the two because I think they both deserve to be up there in their own categories, in their own rights. But I will agree with Czech being statistically the best Premier League goalkeeper. He had like, what, an 80% save percentage at Chelsea or something ridiculous like that. So, yeah, I do agree with you on that. Mason Mount should be a regular star of only if he's playing as a number eight. I don't even think that's an unpopular opinion. I, yeah, I agree. Move on. We shouldn't loan out Ross Barkley because he could he would be a very good number eight option if either Kai or Mount couldn't play. No, just play Kovacic there or play N'Golo Kante. 
bring back Colin Gallagher if you want to, or just get another sentiment. Just don't go back to Ross Barkley. Come on. Like, we finally got a squad that I genuinely think can contend for the title. And now we want to go back to adding bums back into it that we already know didn't work for us. Guys, stop with the Barkley uh, propaganda and, and nostalgia act and everything like that. Because he wasn't like this for us. I, I can count on one hand all the good performances I've seen from Ross Barkley in a Chelsea shirt. And like if I tried counting all the mid performances, we'd be here for another 20 minutes. I'd still be putting ads every two minutes because I'm shameless like that. But no, please, we should have loaned out Ross Barkley. I'm glad I'm glad he's on loan. I'm glad he's shining because it means we can get the most out of him in terms of a transfer fee. But please don't bring Barkley back. You can clip this if he does a madness as well. I don't care. But I've seen so much average performance from Barkley. I don't want to see that back at Chelsea. Our midfield is the best it's been in ages. Don't change it. Please don't change it. My opinion. I'm tired of international breaks because my mind gets confused on the weekend when there's no Chelsea on. <laughs> I'm just imagining this guy waking up at like 12am for the early kickoff against Newcastle and realising there's no football. Low. But yeah, I hate international breaks too. My content absolutely dies during this period. All I have to watch is Southgate ball, which is just worse than Arteta ball if we're being brutally honest about it. But at least I get to see Mason Mount play a little bit more. Um, the only thing I'm happy with this international break is because Kai Havertz is self-isolating. He should be back in time for the Newcastle game. If not that, the Rennes game. So, all in all, it's it's not too bad, this one. Also, we got club football for the next four months straight afterwards. So, yeah, it actually isn't too terrible. But, yeah, I hate international breaks too. And with a massive global pandemic, it don't even make too much sense for me. But I'm not going to speak too much about that. Because if we're going to talk about that, we shouldn't even be having a Champions League or Europa League. So, last international break. Just fuck it. We'll get through the last two weeks and then that'll be it till March. Last question. Eden Hazard leaving was the best thing that could have happened for Chelsea. Because it helped us rebuild massively. Plus, we could end up in the Ozil situation. I'm not so sure about the Ozil situation, but I do agree with what you're saying about Eden Hazard leaving being the best thing that could have helped happen to us. Only in the way where I think it's given a lot of the other team players a lot more responsibility. We were just Eden Hazard FC before then. We were past Eden Hazard and hope he can create something for somebody else or make the goal for himself. Now, we, I mean, well, last season we had a lot more players having to pitch in for goals themselves. We had the Chelsea youth join in in terms of Mount and Abraham. Not so much Callum Hudson-Odoi. Olivier Drew turning up with goals. Willian had his highest goal scoring tally for Chelsea in his entire Chelsea career. Who else did we have turn up? Even Kante had a couple goals. Um, it was all around the squad. Like, I'll be real. The, um, the goal tally was spread. Spread around the entire team. Which is something that we hadn't seen in ages. So, I do agree with you on that. It put a lot more responsibility on some of the Chelsea players to try and bring in more goals to the squad. Before, cause, because before that, it was a lot more easier for them. They just had to make Eden Hazard's job easy. So, I get you on that. Ozil's situation, I'm not so sure. Because I don't think um, there would be any sort of issues between Hazard and the club. Hazard and the club were always open about what they both wanted. And the club were always happy to give Eden Hazard what he wanted. Even if it was him leaving to Real Madrid. So I don't think there's I don't think there's any Urzel situation there, but I do agree with, you, with the main part of your point. But guys, this is the end of the first episode of Unpopular Opinions for this international break. is isn't the first episode overall. But guys, if you have any unpopular opinions that I haven't already mentioned, leave it down in the comment section below. This isn't the end of unpopular opinions for the international break. You guys literally sent me like a hundred. So I've got at least four or five episodes sorted. If you guys want to add any more comments, drop it down in the comment section below. But other than that, don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And yeah, we'll see you for the next episode. Take care and up the chills.